Okay. All right. Praise God. Okay. Well, let me um, try to tag some friends. <laughs> See if I could. Um, I love I love this um, this song. Emmanuel, blessings upon you, beautiful disciple Lavanda, blessings. Victoria, good morning, good afternoon from me to you. Rose, how is Egypt? Victoria in Ghana, blessings upon you. Well, let me give you a minute or two. Invite your friends, your loved ones. Talk somebody. Let them know that it's time. Nanama. Blessings of the Lord be upon you. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Listen, invite your friends. Just in case somebody's... Um, Notification button is off. Invite them that it's time. It's time to hear the word of God. Bringing you live. All right. I'm sitting my somewhere in Europe somewhere. <laughs> let's invite some loved ones and um, let's get to the word of God. Well, I'm glad to know that Rose Egypt, you are doing well. Kojo. From uh, the motherland, blessings, blessings upon you, blessings upon you, all of you. All right, let's get to the word. I love this song. I don't know. Does anybody know it? It's so beautiful. I love it. Oh, glory be to God. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. We bless the Lord for today and um, it is such a wonderful day. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. We ask nothing, O oh God, by your blessings upon us to understand your word. I pray, O oh God, that you bless this, your precious ones, under the sound of my voice. And, um, and, uh, <laughs> and that I pray, O oh God, that um, revelation knowledge will, will uh, will flow freely 
Let understanding abound in the life of your people. Increase your people with understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Well, wherever you are under the sound of my voice, let me also acknowledge uh, now. Now, blessings upon you. Sylvia, blessings, uh, blessings upon you. Amen. Now, let's get straight to the word if you have your Bibles. If you don't have a Bible, grab a pen and notepad and something. Take a note. That will be a blessing to you. And um, please refer to the scriptures as often as possible so that you can come into the, the true knowledge and the saving knowledge of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. It's all about Jesus and what he has done for you and I. All right. I'm acknowledging my beautiful wife. Joyce, wherever you are, God bless you. I know where you are, though. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, let's get to the Word of God. There's something I want to talk to you about today concerning um, salvation, concerning our salvation, and concerning the dispensation in which we live in and what Jesus did for you and I. Beloved, we need to come to that place of, of clear understanding about the ministry of Jesus and what he did for you and I concerning our salvation. This grace dispensation that we are living in is connected to our salvation. Are you listening? It's connected. The grace dispensation we are living in now is connected to our salvation. How did we come to be saved? And if you are saved, you came to believe and receive the finished work of Jesus concerning you. And therefore, you, you gave your life to him. That for what he has done for you, you surrender your life to him completely. Now, before Jesus came to walk on the face of this earth, there were people that God chose among everybody as his people, called the Jews. Now, for the reason of disobedience, among others, God had to give them laws, okay, to abide by. It's almost like, well, we can do things without you, and God created human beings, created pe people to have fellowship with human beings. There's a, a relationship, okay, that he expected that by creating man, man will have a relationship with him. Man, as a result of whatever we saw on the face of the earth, came to a place where it's like we can do without God. Well, God, by his divine wisdom and the understanding between God and man, God put laws. HR, blessings of the Lord be upon you. Francesca, I salute you in Jesus' name. God put laws or a covenant. He made a covenant. He made a deal. There was an agreement between God and man. Now, man could not and that was where these laws came in. The laws that the Mosaic law came in to govern the people. Okay? So therefore, if you do this, then I will do that. I got You do your part and I'll do my part. You do this and I'll do that. And again, um, I've shared this in, uh, with you that there are over 600 of the laws. Most of most people know only of the ten commandments, they call the commandments or the laws. They are all laws. But there are over six hundred. If you start from um, um, Exodus and go into Numbers, go to Deuteronomy, and all that, you will see them there. Man could not fulfill his or her part of the bargain, and therefore, for God so loved the world. Oh, I love that part. For God so loved what he has created. For God so loved, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to come because, you see, 
um, the, in the old dispensation, we see that the priest, again, I've taught this, I'm just recapping, you know, you know, this just to make my point of the day. The priests would take a bowl of blood of, of a ram or a bull to sacrifice once a year for the sins of man. Go and study your scriptures very carefully for the sins of man once a year. So you, you'll be sinning January to if in our calendar, in our dispense, in our time, on all that, and uh, you take once a, a bowl of blood to go to the uh, sanctuary to sacrifice. It's because, see, blood is the highest level of sacrifice. Blood. There's an agreement that you, you know, you write it on paper, you sign, assign, and all that. But when it comes to a serious agreement, a serious covenant, it has to do with blood. It has to do with blood. Because that is, that shows that, listen, this is until death. Until death. Now, and so man could not oblige by his part of the bargain. Hence, God still loved man. Irrespective of our sinful nature and how Adam fell and man, man fell, God still loved man. Why? Because he created us for his own purposes. He created us. I mean, there's the scripture where um, uh, the angels ask God, who is man that you are so mindful of? Who is man? After all, who is man? And, and we are, man is the only species, okay? Like uh, the, the, uh, somebody would say, homo sapiens that God made in his image and in his likeness. Only human beings. And God put his spirit in man. And so man has to have a relationship with God. But as a result of man turning away and God still loving man, he says, well, in order not for my enemy, okay, to say that, well, you are no longer a God because you have broken your laws that it takes only the blood, okay, to make up for that which is broken. Let me send somebody in whose blood. Because every year, the priest has to go to the sanctuary with a bowl of blood and make sacrifices to atone for the sins of man. For the sins of man. Once a year. For the sins of man. Now, God wants man to be closer to him. Because that was the, the initial arrangement that he made. The Bible says, if you go to the book of Genesis, it says, when God created man and God will come in the cool of the day, in the, like in the afternoon hours, to have fellowship with man. Just to have a fellowship with man. So you see, in every human being, there is this craving. Hey, Lucy. There is this craving, this desire for man looking for God. That is why, if some of you know this, you will realize that there are those who seek this supernatural things from either a tree or a, a river or whatever it may be. But man has a desire to look for an, an, a deity, look for a, 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 you know, a supreme being in their life because that is how God created us. There is that longing there. Now, for that reason, and God knows that because he created it. He says, I need to be closer to my people. And I want them to be closer to me. I don't want them to be afraid of me. I don't want them to be far away. And therefore, let me have this agreement that is broken, reinstituted. Reinstitu and so God, for, for God so loved the world, and that's what I've broken it down for you, the world that he created with all the, the people in, he sent his only begotten son. 
by the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. His blood is the only blood that God knows that when it's shed for one time, no other blood will be required. No other blood. Lane, blessings. No other blood. And so Jesus, when he came, he said he did not come to abolish or throw away the laws that govern man by God. Are you listening? That brought some separation between God and man. So therefore, he came to fulfill it because he is the only person who could fulfill it. Beloved, there's 600 and over, about 613 or 15 of the laws. <coughs> All most, most people know is the Ten Commandment. And even with the Ten, you can't fulfill it. Even with the Ten, you cannot fulfill it. Try. Because you know, when it comes to James, James said something very interesting. James chapter 2. He says, when you break one of the laws, you have broken all. Because your responsibility is to obey all. All the, com the excuse me the commandment. Now, if you go to uh, the book of Deuteronomy, you will see that God says, "When you obey all, you are careful to obey all. Then all these blessings will follow you. If you break or any or all, all these curses. So that is to also let you know that curses came or curse came as a result of sin. Are you getting the revelation here? Curse came as a result of sin. Now, Jesus came to fulfill that which man could not and shed his blood. Now, to bridge the gap between man and God so that now man will not be afraid anymore to go boldly to God, the Father, the, the Creator. So Jesus, Bible says that, he became the mediator between God and man. And he has fulfilled that old law, the old dispensation, the old covenant. Give it whatever name it may be. And then has, then turn our back to that. And so if Jesus has then, has done this for you and I, why then? Do you want to live in that old dispensation for which you cannot even obey all of it? The Bible tells you and I that you cannot put an old wine in a new jar. Jesus says, in my blood is a new covenant. In my blood is a new covenant. No more shedding of blood. So therefore, what you and I have to do is to believe and receive that which he has done. And that hence brought us to this dispensation of the grace. This, this, this grace dispensation. But beloved, it has to do with your salvation. Jesus came to save mankind from what we could not do to to. to to uh, bridge the gap between man and God. Are you listening? Opa, blessings upon you. So therefore, you and I have to really come to the place of understanding this. We need to come to a clear understanding of this because you see, today's believers, and most of them, and the reason why I say this is I've been watching I mean, through the social media and visiting some places and listening to people that we are still, we are still living, most people are still living a lifestyle of the old dispensation in the now. Even though Jesus has come to fulfill all that man could not do, and hence he says, look to me for what I have done. But yet man is still looking back and, and, and doing the things that God. I've said this thing, I'm going to repeat myself. In the old dispensation there, 
the Holy Spirit was still alive. But God sent the Holy Spirit into specific life of people to do specific things for the Gentiles to know who he was. Are you listening? Give you an example like Samson. Samson couldn't do nothing without the Holy Spirit. David said a prayer, um, you know, made a confession to God after his, you know, treasonous um, um, act. Made a confession to God and said to God that you can take anything from me, Pastor New Love, blessings upon you. He says, you can take anything from me, but don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Now, we see the, 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 um, the general picture of the Holy Spirit descending even on, on, God, on God's disciples in the day of Pentecost. But at that time, you know, but people were talking about the Holy Spirit with you. Now we are living in the dispensation where Jesus has said to us, Beloved, unless we don't, you don't believe him. Unless you don't believe him. Because it looks like people are believing that what Jesus did, it was not enough. And in the old dispensation, in the days of Paul, that was there. Disciple Rama blessings. In the days of Paul, this this Judaizers, they call them Judaizers, who were Jews, believing Jews, had a problem like that. And it looks like today's Christians have a problem like that. Believing or acting or living that Jesus and what he did for mankind was not enough. Therefore, we have to do certain things to get the blessings and approval of God. And beloved, you are late. You are late. Jesus has completed it. Listen, maybe news flash or news breaking news. Just maybe you haven't heard it before. Jesus said on the cross there, it is finished. It is done. And if you don't understand what he meant by saying that, then I need you to take your time and search the, the scriptures. You will understand. It is finished. Jesus gave us a promise. And the promise is fulfilled. That the Holy Spirit will come. He will ask the Father to send us another helper. Now think, think about what he meant by another helper. It means he came to help us in what we could not help ourselves. But as a result of he completing what he came to do, he has to leave and he will send us another helper by the name of the Holy Spirit. We saw the evidence of this helper, Holy Spirit, when he came. He came on human beings like you and I. From then on, their lifestyle was not the same. The Bible said they went out and, and they were excited and preaching the gospel, the, the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Beloved, everything that we're talking about is your salvation. Your salvation. If you don't understand your salvation, you will be believing wrong. And beloved, I have said this thing time and again. If you believe wrong, you will live wrong. If you believe wrong, you listen. Repentance itself, it's right believing. Repentance. Because if I if I believe that I don't have to do this again, I have given my life to Jesus based on what he has done for me. Beloved, the next time, you know, I, I want to do the, the old things anymore. It won't be there. Because now I believe right. I believe right. And therefore, we need to come to the, the, the understanding that 
this situation that we are finding ourselves in, beloved, if we don't get it right, we will not be able to be effective in obeying the commandment of Jesus. And that is to go ye and make disciples. Interestingly, the people Jesus told to go and make disciples were the people who have a clear understanding when Jesus told them, wait, save people until the Holy Spirit has come. And then go and make disciples. If we don't get this thing right, and continue to think wrong and believe wrong, Christianity cannot be that effective. And if you look at, if you look at research now, other religions are spreading faster, so fast, so, so, so fast than Christianity. We, are, we, we haven't come to the full understanding of our salvation. Beloved, you cannot go and preach any other gospel but salvation. Paul, in his time, oh boy, I was sharing with uh, Pastor I said Paul had a lot of problems. Yes. And not with those who haven't come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Interestingly, those who knew that he was a Jew, Jesus, came from, you know, by the prophecies and on and on and on and on. They, and this were the people who have come to claim they believe, but they did not have a full understanding. Let me read a commentary to you. It's interesting. I saw something that, that caught my attention. This Judaizers, okay, Judaizers, they were Jews. Watch this professing to be believers who taught that Gentile Christians had to conform to certain Old Testament laws and rituals, especially in the area of circumcision. But beloved, it wasn't so. Jesus had already come to fulfill that. So it, it, it tells you when you see people who still believe after Jesus, still believe that you have to go and perform and live in the laws and in the culture of that which has already, Bible says that it is absolute. And if God says something is absolute, it means that that thing doesn't, doesn't have any, any value. That's what it means. God says it is absolute. The laws is absolute. Paul had this problem with this Judaizers. Watch this now. They deny the saving power of God's grace alone and also, taught, also sought to discredit Paul's apostleship and undermine his ministry. And even today, some scholars, some scholars question the validity of some or all of this Judaism's true faith in Christ and his message of salvation. The message of his salvation. It tells me that a lot of people haven't come to the true understanding of salvation. Salvation came after Jesus. Salvation came because of Jesus. But yet we, we don't want to receive that completely because we haven't come to understand it. So therefore, like the old um, um, Jews or the chosen people of God, it's like, you know what? Let's go back to Egypt. Why have you brought us here? Let's go back to Egypt because at least we knew we could get some old spices to make our stews and, and soups nice. God gave them manna, fresh food, divine food. 
God is like, man, what is this? This is the dispensation we are living in. Let's read some scriptures. Come with me to Galatians chapter 1. Now, that's, that was just my opening monologue. Galatians chapter 1. I want us to read something here, and then I'm going to be with you a very short time, and I'm going to let you go. Galatians chapter 1, let's read. This is um, a letter to... Um, to the uh, the people of Gal um, of um, Galatia, of Galatia, Paul wrote to those churches over there. Let's start. Let's read from verse one. And please take your time and um, as an assignment, read chapter the whole of chapter one, chapter two. Uh, it will it will it will bless you for you to understand. Paul, an apostle, commissioned and sent from and sent from uh, not commission and sent from men or Paul and Apostle. I'm using the, um, the, um, the Amplified version so I may interject some sentences in there because that's what is written in there. If you have your Amplified version, you can follow in tow. If you maybe you're using a different um, translation, you may not you know, get those um, inter, um, 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 integers over there. Now, Let's start. Uh, uh, Paul, an apostle, not commissioned and sent from men, nor through the agency of men, but through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers who are with me, Paul, to the churches of Galatia. Verse 3. Greetings. Grace to you and peace. Peace, that's an inner calm and spiritual well-being from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a sacrifice to atone for our sins, to save and sanctify us, so that he might rescue us from this present evil age in accordance with the will and purpose and plan of our God and Father. Get that revelation there. I want you to please highlight verse 4 and read that again. To him be ascribed all the glory through the ages of the ages. Amen. Now that was his greetings. Now let's continue with looking at this area of the gospel. I am astonished, he says. I am astonished and extremely irritated that you are so quickly shifting your allegiance and deserting him, referring to Jesus, who called you by the grace of Christ for a different, even contrary gospel. Look at this picture very carefully. Paul is saying to believers, verse 7, which is really not another gospel, but there are obviously some people masquerading as teachers who are disturbing and confusing you with a misleading counterfeit teaching and want to distort the gospel of Christ, twisting it into something which is absolutely not. And what is the gospel of Christ? Salvation. Let's continue. Verse 8. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we originally preached to you, let him be accursed or condemned to destruction. My goodness. we got to be very careful of what we preach, you know. We got to be careful. And unless you don't believe this, unless you do not believe the salvation gospel of Jesus Christ, beloved, unless you don't believe that. And if you don't, leave it alone. But if you want to preach something else, he says, be our curse. Verse 9, as we have said before, so I now say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel different from that which you receive from us, let him be condemned to destruction again. Watch this now. 
Blessings upon you, grace. Verse 10. Am I now trying to win the favor and approval of men or of God? Or am I seeking to please someone? Uh, certainly not. If I were still trying to be popular with men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. And that was Paul. Because everybody knew who he was. He was a bad boy. Paul was, I mean, bowed to the bone. He knew how to use the law to get your behind killed. He knew how to use the law to get you out of the picture. Paul was about to bow. So he said, listen, he ain't come looking for popularity. He knew who he was before coming to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Verse 11. For I want you to know, believers, listen to who he's talking to. I want you to know, believers, that the gospel which was preached by me is not man's gospel. It is not a human invention or patterned after any human concept. For indeed, I did not receive it from man. <laughs> Nor was I taught it. Now think about it. Who taught, who taught Paul the gospel? Nobody. Nobody taught Paul the, about the gospel. Who? By the Holy Spirit. He says, listen to him. Aretha, blessings upon you, dear. For indeed, verse 12, Galatians chapter 1, verse 12. For indeed, I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but I received it. It through a direct revelation of Jesus Christ. Get the revelation here. He got it by the revelation. Remember, Jesus dealt with him on the way to Damascus. When he was as on he was on his way to get an approval to destroy believers. That's when Jesus met him. He was on his way to get approval. Paul knew how to, how to deal with believers. So he didn't come looking for fame. That's what he was saying here. Beloved, like I said, this, some of us, we didn't come to, the, to me preaching the gospel because of fame. Me sitting down here, my name is Patrick Quenu. I can spell it for you. I know who I is. That's my, my, my negrish English. I know who I is. Trust me when I tell you this. Verse 13, you have heard of my career uh -huh, and former manner of life in Judaism. That's what I'm telling you. Paul didn't come to look for, for nobody. How I used to hunt down and persecute the church of God extensively and with fanatical zeal tried my best to destroy it. Do you hear him? Do you hear Paul? Now, this is somebody you can you couldn't joke with. And when somebody comes to be a believer, understanding the full knowledge of salvation, my goodness, do you think you can mess with him and don't believe what he's saying? Because after all, he doesn't get paid by preaching the gospel. He was even getting paid for destruction. Look at verse 14. And you have heard how I, sur I surpassed many of my contemporaries among my countrymen in my advanced study of the laws of Judaism. And I was extremely loyal to the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, oh glory be to God, oh, when God who had chosen me and set me apart before I was born. Glory be God. I mean, listen to what he's saying. God, who, who called me, who had chosen me and set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased, was pleased, was pleased. Look at verse 16. To reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. As the good news, the way of salvation. 
the way of salvation. The good news of Jesus Christ is nothing but the way of salvation. If you are preaching any other gospel, it's either to, for your own personal gains, the Bible says, or something else. And like Paul says, be accursed. If you preach in any other gospel other than the saving grace of Jesus Christ, be accursed. My goodness. Verse 16 again. He says, He revealed to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles as the good news, the way of salvation. He says, I did not immediately consult with anyone for guidance regarding God's call and his revelation to me. They will, have, they will have changed his mind. Verse 17. Nor did I even go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. Paul is letting you and I know there were apostles before him. But I went to Arabia and stayed a while and afterward returned once more to Damascus. Then three years later, I did go up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas, and that's Peter, and I stayed with him 15 days. But I did not see any other apostle except James, the half-brother of the Lord Jesus. Now in what I am writing to you, he says, I assure you, as if I were standing before God, that I am not lying. What I'm telling you now, listen to Paul. He says, verse 20, he said, Now in what I am writing to you, I assure you, as if I am standing before God, and that I am not lying. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Sicilia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches which were in Christ, in Judea, Jerusalem, and the surrounding region they kept they only kept hearing he who used to prosecute us is now preaching the good news of the faith which he once was trying to destroy <laughs> oh glory oh glory <laughs> hey when the holy ghost come upon you lord you can do some glory glorious stuff hallelujah oh hallelujah Oh man, I'm excited. Hey, Alan, keep teaching. Watch this now, verse 24. And they were glorifying God as the author and source of what had taken place and all that had been accomplished in me. Now, why wouldn't they do that? I want you to please take your time and read because for the sake of time, I've got only about 10 more minutes to go. I need to finish and which I can't finish all. Come with me now. Verse, verse chapter 2. Alright. And we're going to be here. We're going to be jumping. But I want you to read the entire chapter. Look at chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Then after a period of 14 years. I again went up to Jerusalem. This time with Barnabas. Taking titles along also. I went up to Jerusalem. I went up to Jerusalem. Mary John. India. How are you? I went out to Jerusalem because of a divine revelation. And I put before them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. But I did so in a private, before those of reputation, for fear that I might be running or had run the course of my ministry in vain. In vain. But all went well. Not even Titus, who was with me, was compelled, as some had anticipated, to be circumcised, despite the fact that he was a Greek. Get the revelation here. Now look at verse 4. My concern was because of the false brothers, those people masquerading as Christians, who had been secretly smuggled in to the community of believers. They have shipped in to spy. They have slipped in 
to spy on the freedom which we have in Jesus Christ in order to bring us back into the bondage, the bondage which is under the law of Moses. So if you want to live your life under the law of Moses and all the laws, you are in bondage. And that's religion. The RE means going back. The legion means bondage. That's what religion means. Paul says, man, I'm going to end here. We're going to continue. God, if Jesus don't show up, I wanted you to come on time. Jesus, oh, look at verse 4 again. This is Paul's concern. He says, my concern was because of the false brothers. Those who... Those people masquerading as Christians, acting like they are Christians, who had been secretly smuggled into the community of believers. They had slipped in to spy on the freedom, beloved, on the freedom which we have in Christ Jesus in order to bring us back into bondage. And that bondage is to be under the law of the old dispensation. Are you listening to me? Under bondage. And if you don't see it as a bondage and you want to still live there, beloved, you cannot leave, put an old wine into a new jar. Go and look for an old jar and put the old wine in it because you are late. Jesus has already done it. And you, you're, you better believe and receive it and see the difference. And I'm going to end here. My time is up. I want you to please read. We're going to continue. We're going to continue this. And so if you don't understand, beloved, and you see what he's saying here, people who are, I love this part. It says, it says what? Watch this. It says, false people have have been masquerading as Christians who have been secretly sent in into the communities of believers. And they are all over the place. They have been slipped in to spy on the freedom. On the freedom. Get this revelation. Beloved, what Jesus, Jesus has come to give us freedom. Why do you still want to live in that old thing? Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, if you want to talk up, oh, I need to go there. I need to go there. No, 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 Holy Spirit. If you want to talk about bloodline stuff, bloodline stuff, Jesus shed his blood. Oh, glory be to God. Jesus shed his blood. And unless you don't believe it, Now, is any blood powerful than the blood of Jesus? Don't come and talk to me about no bloodline curse. Curse comes as a result of sin. Listen, I, I said to you the other day, I ain't no longer a sinner. You don't, when you see me, you want to see a sinner, then that means you are still wearing the old lenses. And you see yourself a sinner. But I have given my life to Jesus. I am born again. He took away my sins, nailed it to the cross. He says once and for all, Jesus ain't coming to die again. And if he has died it once, I am no longer a sinner. All I have to do is to understand my salvation and enjoy the dispensation of grace. So don't come and confuse me with all those performance Christianity. They are nothing but performance Christianity. It's either for your personal gains or you just don't know it. But it is my prayer that the Holy Spirit, whom you have not come to know, Jesus said something interesting. He says, the world do not know the Holy Spirit, but you do know him. And if you truly know him, then allow him to help in your dispensation, in this dispensation of grace. Beloved, Jesus has done it for us. And I believe it. I don't know about you. I believe that Jesus, I could not. Listen, 
if Jesus didn't come, you and I will still be obeying the law. If, listen, if, does that mean, Pastor, there's no more laws? We don't have to. We're talking about the laws of the old dispensation. There's a new law. And that law is, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandment. Glory be to God. And the commandment of him is for you to also go and make disciples. Tell the people about the, their salvation. Beloved, it's all about the salvation of man. I'm done. I hope you've been blessed. And I know you are blessed. You are just refusing to be blessed, but you are blessed. You are blessed. Did you do anything for you to be alive today? God has already blessed you. What makes you think that you have to perform in a certain way and or perform, uh, uh, do something for God to bless you? Beloved, you can't do enough for God's blessings. You can. Trust what Jesus has done. Believe him. I know this, I know it's a, you know, it's a, it's a radical message. It's a radical message, but the truth, the truth is not easily received. S scripture tells us that when, when Noah was telling people about what God has said and the truth, they were laughing at him. But you see, you may not want to believe it now, but it may be too late for you to believe it. When Paul, the same Paul, talks about in the book of um, uh, Philippians chapter 2, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He didn't say go and work. It means that God, your salvation. Because a lot of people are saying all kinds of things. God, your salvation. You gave your life to Jesus because you believe in the fact that he has, he's, he's taking away your sins. And if he's taking away your sins, are you, are you any longer a sinner? Don't let nobody point your new fingers to you whether you are a sinner. They, they may be sinners, but you ain't. Live in your freedom. You are free. Now you can boldly approach the throne of grace. Get closer to God. You don't need no high priest. Now you don't need no high priest. Glory be to God. Now, you, if it wasn't for Jesus, do you think you wouldn't need a high priest? Because you couldn't go before God. Ain't no way you, could, you can call God my father. Are you kidding me? And if you think God is old and therefore the things he used to do. No, you don't have, you haven't come to understanding him yet. It's because of Jesus. God, he says, I'm the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I have not changed. So, I, 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 and this is just me. This is just gospel according to Patrick. I believe sometimes God, want, he sees some of the crazy stuff, you know, you're doing out there. He want to strike you. But you see, Jesus is now seated at the right side of him, right hand side of, of him. And Jesus will be, who is, is going like this. Papa, Papa. Papa, you can't do this because that's this is the reason why I went down there. Look, 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 you can't strike him. God has not changed. You better believe what Jesus has done. I love you with the love of the Lord and nothing you can do about it. If you tell me you love me more than I love you, I will tell you I love you more than you love me. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. Well, listen, if you have not given your life to Jesus, your salvation is why he died. He loved you. Bible says, he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Beloved, God don't have any other begotten son. If anybody tell you there's another Jesus somewhere, they are lying to you. His only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever, this is not about those sitting in church or anyway, whosoever believe, you see that word there, whosoever believed on him, on him, and what he has done for you, you will not perish, but you have eternal life. Don't worry about you dying. Listen, after you close your, your eyes and, and sleep on this earth, there's still eternal life. 
Your spirit don't die. Are you listening to me? Spirits don't die. This body will be, will be dead. Spirits don't die. You are a spirit. The real you is a spirit. That is why when you talk, I don't see. I hear, I don't see that which comes out of your mouth. Jesus said that the words I speak to you, they are spirit. And they are life. Are you listening? Give your life to Jesus today. If you have not done that, you, you are watching me. I know you are watching me. You thought you maybe I'm browsing through this, um, um, you know, uh, Facebook. Well, today is your day of salvation. You have heard the voice. You are hearing it. You know it's in you. Something is telling you, no, it's not something. Let me tell you something. It's the Holy Spirit. His name is the Holy Spirit. He's not a, he's not a thing. He's, he's a personality. The Holy Spirit is not a thing. And you still even hear Christians talk about something told me. Yeah, because you haven't come to know him. You have not come to know him. So you said something was telling me, something was telling me. What, what is that? That thing doesn't have a name. His name is Holy Spirit. And it's not a thing. Give your life to him today. Give your life to him. And if you are that person, I'm going to pray with you. Join me to pray this prayer. It's called a prayer of salvation. Say, Lord Jesus. I give my life to you today. I believe what I have heard. That you die for my sins. And I'm no longer a sinner. You've taken away my sins. I believe it and I receive you into my heart. From this very moment, live in me. Take control over my life. And remember me. All the time. I want to serve you. I want to walk with you. Help me Jesus. I thank you. Amen. That's it. That's it. That's simple prayer. You don't have to pray for you know 40 days and 1000 years before he hears you. If it sincerely came out of your heart. That's it. Now don't stop right there. I want you to always tell you this. Look in your geographic location, wherever you live, whichever country you are watching in. Look for a Bible teaching, believing, Bible believing teaching church. Okay? Or believing the, you know, Bible believing teaching people. Join them. Let them know you have given your life to Jesus. You have invited Jesus into your heart, into your life, and you want to extend and increase and um, and um, walk with him all right tell them to baptize you you need to be baptized in water are you listening tell them to baptize you and um, don't forget to join me this and every day if Jesus don't show up tonight as always tomorrow God willing we're gonna be here again are you listening now if you want to be a financial support okay you want to send a financial support uh the reason why i asked or give you this opportunity i didn't used to do this now is because the ministry is expanding and people are asking for bibles people are asking for this there are some you know i'm going to share certain things with you tomorrow we cannot we cannot ignore the poor and the needy we have to be a blessing to them we got to be a blessing to them you we got to do that and so your, your, your financial support or financial contribution to this ministry helps to do that. That means you are part of helping and supporting others as well. All right. So do that. Um, you can go to the website and um, get all the information out there how to send your contribution. I'm still not in uh, uh, the studio where you can see the information on your crawler. All right, but if you are in the Americas and uh, you want to use a cash app or Zelle, okay, the apps that you can use that to send your your financial contribution or seed, um, you you can use Zelle or app. I mean Zelle or uh, cash app, and the number associated to that it's nine one four five seven two nine eight one six five nine one four five seven two nine eight one six. If you want to use your um, um, PayPal, you can go, please go to the website. Go to the website, patrickquenuministries.com. 
patrickquenoministries.com and um, you will see that the, the donate button donate click on it and follow the rest of the uh, the directions and um, be a blessing amen i want you to know that you don't have no trouble same time all you need is your faith in god all you need is your faith in god and in all that getting hey bishop bill dallas blessings man of god all you need is your faith in god and in all that getting get what come on let me come on let me hear you let, let me hear you in all that getting get what can somebody I, I can see you i can see it in all that getting get understanding god bless you love you see you same time tomorrow god bless you